On January 12th, Dr. Sia Tola from the Queens County Department of Health update the county commissioners on COVID-19 in the county and the vaccination rollout plan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Again, good news, bad news. So we'll go through the good news first. We've got vaccine. We got vaccine Christmas Eve. We started vaccinating the week after Christmas. Okay. We were initially given 100 doses. And then we were given 500, and then we were given 700. So we had 1,300 doses total that we have received since we started receiving vaccine right after Christmas till today. Today we got a, an additional dose of 500 for first shot, and we got 100 for the second shot. There's going to be some discussion whether you hold on to that 100 for the second shot or think that you're going to get a consistent progression of vaccine every week. Unfortunately, we don't know what we get until the Friday evening before the weekend that they will decide how it's being dispersed. They've now changed the delivery date to Tuesday morning, which makes it a problem for us with a Monday clinic at Ken Island Fire Department knowing how much vaccine we may have to reserve from the previous week in order to be able to cover the appointments that are on Monday at the firehouse because what we're doing is we're testing or, t or vaccinating Mondays 9 to 3 in Island Hall. We set up the prep mod which is the online ability to sign up for 480 spots at each one of those vaccine sites. The second site is on Wednesdays in the Kramer Center from 9 to 3, again with 480 spots. The third location and time is Friday afternoon from 2 to 7 p.m. at Ken Island Fire Department, again with 480 spots. So realistically, I could use 1,500 doses a week. All that we're getting allocated right now is 500 a week. So I've put a request in knowing that we, as of tomorrow, will have finished our A1 population. Now, I am not okay to go forward with the 1Bs yet. But because of the fact that we have agreed to do our congregate housing, our assisted living, and our senior housing, since Walgreens and CVS said that they could not get here till the end of March or early April for that population. I've agreed to do that with the health department and the DES staff that we are using. We will also use our area on aging and our housing authority to help with the vaccination of the senior housing, both in Foxtown and at Terrapin Grove. Now, where do we stand? So far, confirmed cases, 2,482. This was as of yesterday morning. Number of confirmed deaths, nine. How many? Nine. How come I keep reading uh, 20? Nine in addition to. We've had nine deaths in the community. That's in addition to the 18 that we had in the nursing home. We've had four deaths since Christmas. We currently have 12 individuals in the hospital. Now, of the vaccine that we have received, we have injected 1,129 doses for the first dose. And it is Moderna, which is also a two-dose vaccine. And of the 1,129, we have had no adverse reactions. You may have a sore shoulder for 48 hours from the deltoid muscle injection, but we've had no adverse reactions. We are scheduled tomorrow at the Kramer Center. And I can say with all honesty, I think that we truly have given our A1 population, which is public safety, fire, 
EMS, judicial, law enforcement, essential county, hospice, social services who are making home visits because we only have 160 appointments scheduled for tomorrow. We have 127 scheduled for Friday. I am ready to go to 1B. I will go for school nurses. Most, some of those have already been vaccinated on Monday. We're gonna probably finish up the rest of the school nurses tomorrow and Friday. I'm ready to start doing the teachers. I'm ready to start doing the Board of Health staff, and I'm ready to start doing the contracted bus drivers. What I also am going to do is the 75 and older. Now, as we go through this slide, Real quick, Doc, that's it before you get too far ahead on that. Um, so on the 1A, what percentage of those that were eligible under 1A do you think we've had vaccinated? I would say probably 30 to 40 percent of those that were eligible had it because with the volunteer fire stations, we offered it not only to the EMS components, but the fire component and their auxiliary and back room staff to keep those units running. So we've had a large variety. And when you see the age distribution, you will see that we have, with this 1A, with the 1,129, we've covered a large portion of the population in Queen Anne County. We will keep a weekly total of what we're doing, as well as a cumulative total. You ask me about age group. That's no, the no, age. You might want to put on here your weekly allocation. We will also be putting that. You know what I mean? To show I, that you're, you're getting them out there. We are getting right. them out. As right. a matter of fact, I think we're number four in the state as of this morning at what, 84, I think it was 84% mm -hmm. of the allocations that we have received, we've injected. Right. So are you going to talk about the backfill? Because that, that was my biggest thing, and I've talked to Commissioner Wilson and Corcorino about the, the backfilling the second doses. I know you said we got 100 today, but that doesn't, based on what you've injected. Well, let's just put it this way. In 28 days, essentially 28 days, right. I've got to have 1,129 doses ready. That's, that's okay? my point. And that will affect how we can do first dose. <clears throat> and so it's the same point. amount, both shots are the same amount yep. of medicine? It's the same shot. Five. That's the same. Right. I know, yeah. but I mean yeah. the same. It's the same Moderna, mm -hmm. it's the same process, okay? Sir, when you say you're ready to switch over to the over 75s, that's gonna invite a lot of people with a lot of interest. Well, if you look at it right now, when you look at 79 and 80, we've already done about 107 people, 117 over the age of 70. And a lot of that is the auxiliary members in the firehouses. It also, I believe the census indicated, the 2020 census indicated that we had 400 to 500 individuals over the age of 75 in Queen Anne County. Technically, I've already done a quarter mm. before I've even hit the majority of them. So realistically, I think that with a week and a half to two weeks of reaching out to that population, we will get them. And also get them by going to our senior housing because there's a lot of significant 65 and olders in those housing. <clears throat> and we're using the mobile teams to get to them. We are going to those homes. We're going to the assisted livings. With the MIC team, we composed of two nurses, a paramedic, and one of our addiction counselors for admin. We are doing not only the residents that want it, but also all of the staff that wants it at the assisted living and congregate homes. How about our three senior uh, populations, Foxtown, Terrapin, are they included? That's be included, included in, in that. that. Okay. Foxtown and Terrapin are considered congregate housing. Okay. Now, you look at the age bracket, that gives you a pretty good indication of where we are. The one 17 year old was a young man who was one month from his 18th birthday, so he got a shot. Because 18 is the cutoff for Moderna. I cannot do anybody under the age of 18. Now, Testing, we are still testing. We are testing three days a week, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. At this point in time, for the month of January, we have tested 1,208 people as of today. 
and we plan to continue this this week. The following week, I am transitioning from a testing standpoint to a vaccination standpoint with staffing. Chesapeake College and Shore Regional Health is still testing on Mondays and Wednesdays. We will test on Tuesdays so that you get three days of testing after a weekend and the results should be back before the next weekend. So that way we know we can advise people as far as travel, isolation, and quarantining. Remember when I said January was gonna be a rough month? That shows you where we are right now. And we just added 37 more positive cases for January today. We are sitting at 448 positive cases at Queen Anne County residents since the 1st of January. We're gonna beat December. I suspect we're gonna be at 1,000 or more positive cases in this jurisdiction by the end of the month of January. This, we never caught up or got caught up from the effects of Thanksgiving. We had Christmas hit us, and now we've got New Year's we're dealing with. And when I want to discuss with you the daily census rate that we're getting for the state on positive cases related to a population of 100,000. We'll get to that as I finish this slide presentation. This is your total cases by percentage. And I want you to look at the age bracket. You look at five to nine, 10 to 14, five to nine, it's 2.4% of our population. 10 to 14, you're looking at 3.5% of our population. You look at our seniors, you're looking at essentially almost 9% positivity. So you add that up, that's our school age children. But the majority as you see is our 20 to 35 or 45, that's a huge bump. And then our 45 to 65 is also very high. But did, could that also be relative to the fact that that is basically your working age group almost to yes. some extent? Yes, that is your working age group. That is also the age group that's socializing more, both at work and at home. This gives you an indication of what's happened as far as hospitalizations and deaths. We've had three deaths in January. We had the one right after Christmas, and we had the one right after Thanksgiving. So that's where the additional deaths have come from. That shows the majority of the deaths have occurred 65 or older. And we just saw an article today in a statement that was released by Dr. Delbridge, the executive director for MIMS. There is some issue now that we're investigating statewide, unexplained, sudden cardiac arrest in 65 and older. They're now requesting and requiring probably the FIs and possibly the EMS response to do a COVID test because it may be related to COVID. These patients were not in the hospital, they were home. So there is some additional worry here. So the big question tonight is, and the big statement tonight is, the vaccine is here. The more vaccine we get, we're gonna push it out. Now, the other thing that we have done for the citizens of Queen Anne County, and it was on the Queen Anne County website, are you interested in getting vaccinated for COVID-19? And it's gonna have a link. You can link to this webpage. And it's both on the health department webpage as well as the county webpage. And what this will do is it will ask the information if you're interested in a test in, in a vaccine. And by doing that, we can get a congregate number of groupings of 65 and older their location and be able to send them an email and say, here's the link to sign up to, to get into one of the vaccination clinics. So that will have, you're, you're gonna be asking for their name, email address and everything. Email, uh -huh. name, 
and age, and age not birth date. Right. I said, we're not putting any personal information on uh -huh. here except for your name, email, address, and an age, because that's how I'm going after the 65 and older. If I know specifically how many want it, where we can do it, we can designate a, a COVID link to get that population addressed. When are, when are you pushing that out? I believe it's out right now. I think Beth Molaski was going to push it out as I am speaking. Okay. Very good. Where we stand today disturbs me immensely. When you look at our daily surveillance rate that the state is pushing out of the number of cases per 100,000 in our jurisdiction and the percent positivity, let me just say, we are at 74 cases positive per 100,000. Talbot County is at 59.2. Kent County is at 64.0. Dorchester County, 84.0. Point six. Caroline County, 70.1. I've been notified the Board of Ed has voted to open the schools in two weeks. Gentlemen, there's no way, in my medical opinion, in my ethical opinion, in my moral opinion, that with the current status of the positivity in Queen Anne County and the fact that we've not been able to appropriately vaccinate our Board of Ed staff and our elderly that I feel that it is wrong and I advise against opening in two weeks. The metrics that the state has given us, if you hit a positivity rate per 100,000 of 25, we're in the red zone. Well, you see where we are. We're beyond the red zone. We have a major positive outbreak right now throughout the county. We're trying to get the vaccine out, but the critical message for the citizens of Queen Anne, we will continue to test you. We will continue to do the contact tracing. We will ramp up as much vaccine as we get into the public. If we've got vaccine, it's not doing any good sitting in a freezer or refrigerator. It needs to be in an arm. But the point of the matter is, we need our citizens to be as vigilant as possible. Wear your mask, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands. And if you are sick, if you have flu-like symptoms, stay home. What do you, what do you, uh, what kind of information are you getting from the contact tracing of these cases? Like. Most have been social gatherings, family gatherings, and travel out of state. Okay. And we knew it was going to happen. It's inevitable. Now, the other, the other stone in the ointment is the fact that we've now identified in Anne Arundel County two positive cases that are the mutated UK version of COVID-19. And looking at the way we're spreading here, I would not be surprised if we don't have it in this county. And knowing the people, the number of people that live in Queen Anne County and work in Anne Arundel and work in the federal organizations, work in DC, this really ramps up the rate of positivity. This one is highly contagious. How bad and what are the more morbidity and mortality with it? And will the vaccine cover it? Looking at the data from the UK, they say that the vaccine will cover it against the mutation. It may even mute the symptomatology of people that get infected with this mutated strain so that they're not as sick. But we don't know all those answers yet. But we do know we now have confirmed cases in Maryland and right in two of them in Anne Arundel County. Now I'll take any questions. Um, 
after the vaccinations have been administered, um, the second one, how long um, after that second vaccine do you, is it wise to continue to wear your mask? Realistically, we yes. can't answer that question. Huh? We can't answer that question. We don't have enough data to know how protected we are. We think that 12 days to 15 days after the second dose, you should have significant full antibody coverage. But we don't know if you get exposed, can you still spread it but not be symptomatic? We have a lot of asymptomatic positive cases have no symptoms, but yet when you do a PCR or a rapid test, all of a sudden they're positive and they technically can be spreading. So that's why the CDC, as well as the state, has recommended we continue wearing the mask until we get a better handle on how these vaccines and how this virus is going to act when, quote unquote, we have herd immunity. Now, how many do we have to vaccinate? Dr. Fauci has gone over the, the numbers in different variations. So realistically, 75 to 95 percent would be a good range to be in. But I can't give you that kind of answer yet. Question for me, sir. Uh, a number of us have been fairly disturbed by the rather low rate of acceptance of this vaccine by people under 50 or 55. What do you think we or you should be doing to up that? And what is your comments on that acceptance rate? If we can't get enough people vaccinated, we ain't going to get any herd humanity. Well, it was rather distressing to see, look at the numbers that the state has published regarding the hospital use, where the large majority of the vaccines went initially. And when you see that a, that a hospital system with healthcare providers as still about 40 or 45 percent of what was allocated to them, that tells you that fear is a real entity here and misconception of what these vaccines can do. Yeah, these are emergency youth authorization vaccines that have not gone through that normal FDA five to 10 year program to develop a vaccine. I trust the vaccine. I've had the vaccine. I was vaccinated on New Year's Eve. I figured I'm going to go out of COVID-19. <laughs> Where you need to go? Kill it. So I think the more people that we vaccinate, realize that your ear's not going to fall off. You're not going to grow a third arm, OK? Or I hope it makes hair grow, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> Chris, you and I get in line. Might not be so bad, right? <laughs> So does Todd. I think, I think what we need to do is those in leadership, both in the health community, as well as county leaders, church leaders, we need to get them vaccinated and they can show their constituents, their parishioners, mm -hmm. that, hey, we all need to do this. We all need to do this together. We're all in this together. This is not political, folks. It's been too politicized up to this point in time, in my opinion. Does that answer the question? Uh, it may answer my question. I don't think it solves the problem, but no, we'll it see. doesn't solve the problem no. because you can't mandate it. I understand that, but it really is key that we get the younger people well, doing this thing as a community, a as a community as responsibility. What, what happened to me is that we offered it to them. And I think that at some point we've got to say this is a community obligation. We can't open the schools with confidence. We can't send our police out with confidence if we can't get our community up to herd level. And we're not going to do it when we got under 30 percent of the younger people accepting the vaccine, which is where we are. It's not good. So, so, Doc, on the number side, so if, correct me if I'm wrong, because this will lead to my question, I guess. Um, with the original numbers from Maryland, uh, if I'm remembering right, is that we were going to be given or distributing 70,000 vaccines a week. Was that the original goal? Is, it, is that the, what I remember 74. hearing? What? We are, the state gets 10,000 
doses, day. I believe, a day. Right, so that's where the 70,000 came from. That was the 70,000. Right now, and I believe the governor addressed that this morning in his press conference, they're vac we're vaccinating probably close to 14 to 15,000 a day. So, okay. so even at the 10, so if we used a 10 a day, and, and I just ran it, 80% of the people in the state of Maryland got vaccinated, it'll till, still take for the first dose 5.7 years, because it's roughly, it's 85 weeks if we did everybody. No, just seven there, years. So I mean, there is no way we can do what we need to do with ten thousand a day. Right. That's that's. I guess that's my point. Is where in what are we getting any indication of when we're going to hit that line? Because I would guess so. To get it down to roughly just two years, we'd have to be doing almost. I think I figured out like sixty-one thousand a day just to get it he, down. Realistically, what we're looking at, if Moderna can do it, is a hundred thousand doses a day. Okay, so that's even more than what I'm thinking. And move it. Yeah. Queen Anne's County, if you take the population of roughly 50,000 and you remove the kids and those that don't want it and just assume. That's why I said 80 percent. That's why I'm thinking. You well, I'm saying yeah, I, I would go 50 percent. It still leaves you with, uh, I think we figured it out to take some five months at 500 shots a day, five days a week. It would take five months to do two shots. Yeah, no, at 50%. we have worked it out. And yeah. Yes, it We're is ready 500 to do, a day. We're ready to do 500 to right. 600 a day. Right. If they give me the vaccine. But the only thing and, that's that's stolen Queen Anne's County is supply. If the population accepts it. Right. I mean we can be there with right. all all the all the staff, mm -hmm. all the vaccine, but if people don't want it, mm -hmm. we can't force it. Right. What we have to do is show an example that yeah, we're fine, nothing happened, and we, we need it as a community, folks. I don't think you're going to have a problem with 65s and older. I think they're ready. I don't think we are either. They're, they're, they're pounding at the door. But to your point, 50 percent, Doc's already saying we got to get no, 75 I, I gave to 80 that, to get We just use that immunity. as an example. That, right. But I'm just saying to get to herd immunity where we would actually be safe from it at 80 percent, that's a still, that's a tall. It's not just herd immunity. It's and, and, ha, and how does that work with the more urban areas? If they have more outbreaks, there's probably going to be more vaccines, obviously, pushed that way. You know what I mean? Vaccine. They're going to play a numbers game with it. They got to. Well, vaccine allocation right now is by partly by a base unit of vaccine that they formulated for us from MDH and the feds and based on population. Right. I mean, we're getting a little bit more than some of the other jurisdictions over the eastern shore. Because of much. because of our age population, okay. not age, just population. Because if you go by age, Talbot and Kent. I think more when the Johnson months. gets approved, the stream is going to pick up it, a it, lot. It seems to me that it would make sense that if you could take the smaller communities like Queen Anne's County and and vaccinate them, now you have an entire area that has been been vaccinated, and the the value there has got to be everybody in the community with within the borders of our county. If you could get 80% of them vaccinated, you're in great shape. Well, I think some other smaller... counties might have some uh, something to say but, about that. Well, but if you look at, uh, like you said, emergency services and everyone else, only 30%. 30%, yeah, that's I mean, low. And those are the people that live it. Yeah. You know, and you I, look I, at hospital Nurses staff. in my wife's hospital are, can't get up to 30% amongst the nurses. Unbelievable. So why, why do you think that is, Doc? Honestly, why, why would nurses not be? I mean, I don't know. Because I mean, we would... live in a day and age where nobody trusts anything that comes from the government. Uh, I was going to say, it's a question of fear. <laughs> anything that comes from anywhere. Now, the childbearing <laughs> age, childbearing age, there is some questions about mm. pregnancy. There is questions about taking it if you are pregnant and if you're anticipating on getting pregnant because they don't know enough about this vaccine. So I have no... I don't have any qualms about them saying, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But and that's are, up to their OB and their GYN. Right, but that's a small percentage a of the small ones percentage that have gone. Of what These are young guys that are not coming in. So, I mean, we got 20% uh, We made it very clear. It was bold on today's push out. Day and to, or tomorrow and Friday for the right. A1s, this is your last chance to be first in line. Right. After that, go to the back of the line. Mm -hmm. Good. And still get vaccinated. Once we have, you know, once we move through 1A, they can still come in. But I've got so to you get... anticipate that next week you'll be in the 65 and older. Yes. Very good. 65 and, or and educators. 65. Mm -hmm. And our educators. Yep. Okay. Until the governor tells me I can't. 
because he's already said he didn't want us moving into 1B. But I, what's the sense in holding vaccine? Right. I'm finish 1A. If I can't fill a vaccination clinic, I need to move on. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you'll just backfill. Obviously, you'll backfill the other people that may have been A's, B's, or C's. I mean, well, you once you pass by them, they can always come back in. They right? can always come back in. Right. And that link is open. That clinic is there. We're not turning people away. I don't know if she wants to. Okay. Agree. 100% agree. Yep, keep moving. We, we need else? more arms and more vaccines, so, and the arms is something that the people in Queens County can do something about. We talked about. about staff and saying if we needed money, we're fine. We've got what we need. We can roll right now. But when we go to seven days a week, I'll be coming and asking for some money. We'll give it to you. Because we'll have to hire more contracted staff and agency <laughs> staff. <laughs> if you can find them. We'll find them. Okay. And the plan is to move to North County, and we're checking out Sudlersville Fire Department. I will be talking to Billy Faust and the chief up there about using their hall to start moving up. But I, I need to get the assisted livings done with the mobile teams before I can really start shifting. How about the senior center up there in, at Foxtown? Uh, the adjacent senior center is not being, I mean, it's vacant right now. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do it right in Foxtown. So the, okay. when they're up doing the cruise up there, they're going to take a look at the firehouse in their hall because you have to be six feet distancing when you're doing all of the vaccination. You've got to have a large enough area that the people that you vaccinated have to sit for 10 to 15 minutes at a six foot interval and be observed and make sure that there's no adverse reaction. And I want to sort of highlight that. So people who are concerned about getting the vaccine, when you go into the vaccine clinic, after the vaccine is administered to you, you're sitting there six feet apart from the people who just been vaccinated. There's medical professionals who are there to monitor everybody. So far, nobody has had a bad reaction, but you will be monitored. And then each day you get a message by text. How are you feeling? Do you have these symptoms? Everything is being monitored. There is a lot of science going behind monitoring this, the safeness of this. Not, we're not just jabbing someone in the arm and you're sending them along. So I want people to know that, I mean, since we've been doing this, we've had no bad outcomes out of this. So it, it is safe. It's important that you go out there and get it. And the only one we had any issue with was a young 20 year old who got a little vasovagal after a shot. You did what? But Vasa Vega you can get from, you know, eye drops or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can look right. at a drop of blood and say, oh, I'm going to, I feel I'm going to go out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that was the only Sort of like thing. a panic attack. That, <laughs> so, yeah, a little yeah. bottle of water and his feet up on a chair and it's not fine. But that go. was the extent of anything. Well, while we're on the subject, Todd, what I would like, I want to actually make a motion. Um, the, the, the clergy is not in category 1A or 1B. It's really the way it's been interpreted. Maybe they're in the general population. Um, administering to someone's spiritual health is just as important as their mental health. And you got clergy who's going and dealing with families who their loved ones have COVID or they're administering last rites. And I would like for the commissioners to send a letter to the governor asking them to um, reevaluate how they look at the category so that the clergy is in 1A so that they can get their vaccines now. It's very important, I think, that they have that. So I that's agree. my motion. So, so uh, formulate a motion. Uh, well, and I'd like to add to that because I've been reached out to is about the people that are handling the dead bodies and funerals and morticians and everybody else. Reached out. It's already been but, uh, Okay. So I, I move that we send a letter to the governor um, asking that the clergy be uh, moved into category 1A. Second. Motion second. Any discussion on that? Agree with you 100%. I've, I've had a couple of clergy reach out to me and I told them to do just that, write letters to the governor. But. Uh, Sounds like in Queen Anne's County, they can get in there on Monday anyways. So <laughs> maybe that's, Friday. Uh, that's a good thing. Maybe yeah. Friday. So we got uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else, gentlemen? No, thank you for all you're doing. Outstanding. Thank you.